Unions build. Roads, bridges, and buildings. Yes. But with training and apprenticeship programs, unions build much more. A safer community, careers without crushing debt, and a route to rebuild the American middle class. Unions build the future. And we're just getting started. Join us. Today on Built to Last, smart muscle. The days of hiring a laborer from the neck down is a myth. It's over. Facelift for Mark Twain. Sometimes buildings say, get me, come to me. And grid light, green light, smart grid. If there is a problem, if something's wrong, then we can address it. Pick up a hammer. It's time for Built to Last. Built to Last is brought to you by the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters Labor and Management Committee and Armstrong Ceilings. Faster, easier, better. Welcome to Built to Last. I'm Monica Peterson. And I'm Mark Nelson. We're at the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters Apprenticeship and Training Center, where tomorrow's apprentices begin the road toward becoming a skilled journeyman. And while that road might seem a long and difficult one, traffic on real roads keeps flowing thanks to the hardworking, skilled tradesmen and women of one union. We've all been there, stuck in annoying traffic jams that can stretch for miles. It's the reason why we have traffic management control. If we didn't have traffic control, that would be chaos. And if you haven't noticed, the men and women of IBEW Local 9 are out on the roads at all times, responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of those systems to help keep traffic flowing. You know, safety is the biggest thing here. My daughters, my family, my friends, everybody is driving out there. All of the equipment that is maintained on the tollway and other highways all works together to keep traffic moving smoothly. That's really the essence of what we do. By doing so in a maintenance role, you have to have people in place that A, are safe, that are certainly qualified, know the areas in which they're going to be working, and certainly the equipment that they're working on. I'm currently working on intelligent transportation safety maintenance, so I maintain cameras, messaging signs, radar on the tollway, weather stations, um, weighted motion scales, all kinds of equipment that keeps traffic moving smoothly. As far as the cabinets, you know, there's a controller that actually will uh, control the green and the amber and the reds. And um, there's also a form of communication in the box so that we can actually talk to the via cabinets so we know the type of traffic flow that's going, if there is a problem, if something's wrong, then we can address it and then we can get the proper people out there to take care of it in a reasonable amount of time. We take the time to actually do the diagnostics on the equipment to see if it is functioning properly. And if it's not functioning properly, then repair it. I work on the system that basically creates travel times in Chicago, digital message signs, surveillance. It's giving the information of the state of traffic at all times within this district of Illinois. There's several instances of messaging signs problems that can happen. It'd be some of the modules, so some of the little boxes in the front that have the lights, LED lights in them, could go out, so it could make the message unclear if part of the message is obscured. So what we'll have to do for that is we go up in the sign, test the modules, we change them out if they're defective. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of power cycling a sign to get things back to working. And it, it's a large variety of troubleshooting steps you have to go through to see what's going on in the signs. One of the most major projects we've had in at least the last decade. It's a nerve center in Chicago, we all know that. We pick up three major expressways with a fourth, you know, um, arterial to Lakeshore Drive. And as far as the amount of traffic that passes through there, I think it's a staggering number of vehicles. You know, we've, everyone's got to get through the nerve center of Chicago. And ultimately what it's doing is it's creating a better flow through that area, through new flyovers, new uh, bridges, as well as new ramps in order to be, get traffic in and out of that area. And ultimately what it does is it also gives us a new nerve center to shut new information through there, through all the infrastructure work that's being done as well in communications, fiber work, traffic, cameras. It gives us all an ability to know what's happening sooner and, and more in depth. So you know how to react down the line. 
The reversible lanes are used in order to be able to shunt people in and out of the downtown area as quickly and as efficiently as possible when the need arises. Very important system for that core because of the amount of vehicles and people you are getting in and out of the city on a daily basis to work and also for special events. So it, it is, plays a very vital role in being able to take pressure off a specific direction of traffic. Doing it safely, doing it where we're constantly upgrading our knowledge base for new equipment, um, creating new classes at our apprenticeship program. I'll be um, finishing up my apprenticeship program this year and starting the summer I'm going to start teaching at the school myself. So I will be teaching CPR, first aid, and basic electricity and they're working on developing more computing classes that I'll also have a hand in in the future. I went to DeVry and got myself a background in electronics and then once I graduated, um, local number nine and Mean Electric called me for an interview and I was on board from the start. Being in a union is a big family and we use everybody's strength you know, as our advantage. I got drawn into the trades because as a part-time uh, college professor, I just wasn't able to make the income that I needed to support my family. So one of my good friends recommended Local 9. She had been a member for over 18 years and she said it was great for her. Um, so I went to the union and it brought me here and it's, I have a stable income and a comfortable life and good benefits and it's been great for me. It's really interesting and it's always exciting. I have a great time doing my job. Our people are out there making sure that when you wake up in the morning, you can get in your car and go to work. I really want the public to understand that when we're on the side of the road that you need to really look out for the people. You know, move over, slow down. Part of my job that concerns me the most, that we're out on the side of the road and a lot of times people aren't paying attention and not slowing down for us and we would really appreciate it if you would keep us safe and let us go home to our families and we're gonna try our best to keep you safe as well. It's designed for one person. It's designed for one person to live in one room. And because it's a small square footage, is very, very affordable. At Armstrong Ceiling and Wall Solutions, we take great pride in making a positive difference in the lives of people. With the broadest portfolio in the industry and the technical performance to back it up, you can design and install with confidence. Our ceiling construction expertise, training, and pre-engineered ceiling solutions make it easy for you to seamlessly transition from one end of the building to the other. Improve construction efficiencies and keep every job on time, on budget, and on the mark with Armstrong Ceiling and Wall Solutions. Faster, easier, better. When you need a concrete contractor for your commercial project, you can't waste time waiting through countless unproven contractors who don't specialize in the job type you need or service your area. ConcreteIL.com lets you browse Northern Illinois' top contractors to find the perfect fit for your exact needs. You can filter our vetted list of contractors by both job type and location, and even request proposals directly through the site. Thinking commercial concrete? Think ConcreteIL.com. From bridges and trains to iconic high-rises, have you ever wondered who's powering Chicago? Power Unlike our sports heroes, they go unnoticed. Yet they proudly keep our businesses, homes, and great city running. IBEW Local 134 electricians and the electrical contractors have the experience, training, and reliability to keep Chicago open for business. Tradesmen and women are an integral thread in the fabric of this nation, and it's the endless hard work of the members of the labor family that has helped make this country great. No matter if you're wealthy or in need, everyone needs a clean, safe home. An SRO is a single room occupancy property, sometimes called a residential hotel, an SRO hotel, a rooming house. But what it really means is that it's designed for one person. It's designed for one person to live in one room. So it's a small room, um, and it's an apartment, right? And because it's a small square footage, is very, very affordable. At one time, there were thousands of SROs across the city of Chicago. In addition, these SROs tend to be historic in nature, and they have unique facades, they have unique layouts. My first uh, apartment was a studio apartment. <laughs> I had a building called 1140 North LaSalle. The people who live here are not who you would think. They are the uh, line cooks at the restaurants around the corner. The uh, the, the servers. They're just regular people. 
all nationalities, from all backgrounds. I served in the United States Navy four years from 1986 to 1990. I was the butcher across the street. Some of these residents who live in these neighborhoods for a long time, that's their home. I moved in Mark Twain in 1998. Three different times in about five years each time. We believe in new housing, we believe in economic development, but we also uh, recognize that we have people that need help in our community. The SRO Preservation Ordinance is a result of uh, a coalition of uh, vested parties, including SRO tenants, that uh, was passed by the city in November of 2014. We figured out a way, working with the mayor's office, for an SRO provider to get first choice on buying a property. The NHP Foundation is a nonprofit organization with a mission to uh, preserve affordable housing um, nationally. Sometimes buildings speak to you, sometimes buildings say, get me, come to me. And I feel like that was the way it was with Mark Twain. First of all, its location is really key because it's right above a subway station. So I can jump on the train right downstairs. The trains and then the buses, everything stops right there. You can get to any location in Chicago. In addition, it had ground floor retail in a really good location and the retail wasn't entirely occupied. So we knew it was an opportunity to reboot the retail, which will then support the cost of construction upstairs. We took the risk to buy it, hold it, operate it while we put together the rehab plan. And it took a lot of patience and perseverance, but what it did is it allowed us to be thoughtful about you know, how we were gonna do it, keep our residents informed, have control over the building, really get to know it. You give people a certain amount of time uh, to move out while the building is being rehabbed. You give them opportunity to move back in. We met with every resident individually. We tried to understand where their jobs, the resources were all located. And then we tried to find them suitable alternative housing. So everyone has dispersed temporarily for less than 12 months to alternative housing options. This is a 1919, 1920 building that was built with craftsmanship that you don't see today. It's a U-shaped hotel. Uh, that's its architectural style. It's U-shaped, rooms all surrounding. It's got terracotta banding on the outside. This building is being done using historic tax credits, which means that it, the, all the renovations have to meet the guidelines of the National Park Service. When you build new buildings, most of your costs go into the materials. When you rehab historic buildings, most of the costs go into the labor. Everybody who works for Nathan Lennon Sons is a union tradesman. The professionalism that our guys have and the ability to recognize situations where things have to be done a certain way, and that's what our guys are trained to do, make sure that it's done right. I know when I call somebody to come to work for us, if they have a union card, they can get the work done. They're converting it from strictly a sleeping room arrangement to efficiency apartments. You're gonna walk in, you're gonna have a kitchenette, you got your own bathroom, you got storage. And we are also providing furniture, so they'll have a bed, a dresser, a table, and then a fully finished kitchen. I'm gonna cook for everybody. And everything would be hot and fresh. It's like, oh. getting, getting an apartment, getting a place to live, it gives you the foundation to do everything else. People don't really understand that you're improving the neighborhood. You're, you know, these buildings are beautiful buildings when they're done there, and they're well managed. I had to practice what I preach. If I'm gonna encourage other folks to have them by their homes, I want them by my home. Viceroy Hotel is down the street from my home. Every day you would see either a police car or ambulance. Heartland Alliance took the building over, they rehabbed it, they put a doorman in the building, and they offered the folks services. Well, resident services at Mark Twain um, provides place-based, so in the building, services and programs um, to help residents increase their quality of life. Anywhere from taxes to you need to find a doctor. It's helping folks to utilize all of the social services that they have, helping them to get jobs, education. And it gives people options that have limited options. I never asked for a lot of anything. Just to have a roof over my head, and say, hey, that's my house. When I put the key in the door, my house. In the early 20th century, Chicago supported working class residents through tens of thousands of SRO units. Today, 
there are about 5,000 units remaining. It's not about the 40 hours they're here. It's about you making an impact to where when they leave, they actually see things just in a different light. Keeping restaurants and hotels up to date with the latest design trends is a constant challenge. Finding qualified contractors isn't at finishingchicago.com. We work with top designers and general contractors who use the latest painting, drywall finishing, and wall covering techniques in Chicagoland's premier hotels and restaurants. The hospitality industry relies on finishingchicago.com as its free resource to find quality finishing contractors. For a great finish, start with finishingchicago.com. 24-7, IBEW Local 9 linemen are there protecting you and your family from the moment you wake up with the power in your home, on your way to work, lighting the way and easing congestion, plus keeping you safe with traffic lights and cameras. So the next time you're at a stoplight, pass under a power line, or just pull into your brightly lit neighborhood, think of your friends at IBEW Local 9. We'll continue to light the way for you. Meet us online at IBEW9.org. To get a job done, you need manpower and good old-fashioned elbow grease. But in today's work environment, you need something else. The days of hiring a laborer or construction worker from the neck down is a myth. It's over. You can't just go in and take down the wall in a, in a hospital or a controlled environment. Whether you're flagging or you're con on a concrete pour, critical thinking is a must. That need for a thinking skilled workforce sparked the foundation of the Chicago Laborers District Council Training and Apprentice Fund. Me and one of the other instructors, Marcus, we went through the first set of apprenticeship classes that they had to offer and a lot of guys didn't know what a, a labor apprentice was then. And the fund has been raising standards and expectations ever since. A contractor will sponsor an individual to go through a two-year apprenticeship program. Within that two-year program, they're required to come to the training center for 360 hours over the two years, which is nine classes that are specific within our craft. You're actually getting paid to come here and learn, to learn a trade. Unlike other training funds around the country, we represent 15 different locals in our district council. Because our scope is so diverse, our curriculum has to meet the needs of our industry in our nine county area. So our classes range from underground work, roads, bridges, working in high rise buildings, or demolition environmental, as well as meeting all their safety courses needs. You're getting certificates, you're getting licenses. It's not about the 40 hours they're here, However long the class is about, you know, you making an impact to where when they leave, they actually see things just in a different light. That's what you came up with? Yeah. Divide that by two, that's the exact answer. I did think about college, but um, college, you know, was kind of far-fetched for me. I had um, several family members who were in the union. For me, uh, labor has always been like the honest money. Being in this type of program, it opened up my eyes to like, there can be other avenues. What's unique about our training facilities, we were one of only two in the country recognized by IAS, International Accreditation Services, for a accredited training agency under AC371. The good thing about coming to the training center and being one of our apprentices is our style of teaching. We do what's called the learner-centered methodology. They bring you in, make it all about how you learn. Some learn by seeing, some learn by doing, some learn by listening. I'm hands-on about everything, so for me, I can learn in the classroom, but actually applying it and hearing it in the classroom are completely different. We identify those needs and we cater our lesson plans to meet those needs of the learners. We have students that leave here excited and actually say, I've had students say this is like the most exciting class I've ever had, and they're talking about an OSHA 30. When you get on a job site, there's a lot of moving parts. It can be very dangerous. And what the training center did was allowed us to kind of understand the workings of a job site and what our responsibilities are. We're going to try to get one more baker scaffold in here before we put our decon up. We have two facilities, uh, one in Carroll Stream and one in Chicagoland area. Our one in Carroll Stream is 70,000 square feet on 15 acres. It has seven classrooms and four training bays. Chicago facility has 70,000 square feet and has nine classrooms and three training bays. Sounds pretty big, but not enough to meet our membership's expanding needs. We're adding another 70,000 square feet, and when it's all finished, we'll have 20 classrooms, 13 training bays. 
What's unique about our training bays, um, we don't have to worry about Chicago weather. Um, if we wanted to pour concrete, we could pour concrete. If we wanted to use pneumatic tools to break the concrete, we could break the concrete. We have underground bay that could teach sewer, water, trenching systems, shoring systems, give them real life experiences in trenches and excavations and confined spaces. And more space means more continuing education. Our laborers have to stay relevant, so they have to continue their education through a series of classes, keep their certificates up, because that may be the difference between getting hired or not getting hired. And they're not alone. We as instructors, we have to stay up on standards, change with OSHA, change with different rules, regulations, even down to city codes. We're creating a, a different culture in the classroom with our apprentices. These apprentices are starting here now and will be in the field for the next 20, 30, 40 years. They are our product. They represent the union and they represent who we are in Layuna. It's really an awesome program for these people. And if we can put people in this plant to produce jobs, that's what we're all about. When you have plumbing issues in your home, it can disrupt your whole routine. At Plumbers 911, we connect you with a highly experienced plumber in five minutes or less. We call it our five minute promise. All of our expert plumbers are highly trained, background checked, licensed, and insured, so you can feel confident that your job will be done right the first time. Our phones are open 24 7 to help solve your problem, day or night, at 1 833 PLUM 911. Plumbers 911, your plumbing connection. We are DeWalt. We're the ones who grind it out. The ones using materials from all over the world to build the things that build America right here in America. And there's no place we'd rather be. Land of the free, tools of the brave. This is a team. It's made up of different players, positions, skills, talented, sure, but on their own. Because every team needs a coach, someone who makes things work together. That's how less it works. We're coaches in the construction industry, bringing together laborers and management, unions and contractor associations. Our work leads to safer, stronger construction, which is a win for us all. Modular building is the way of the future. A new factory in Chicago is driving innovation not only through what it manufactures, but in a whole range of other areas within the construction industry. Modular designed buildings are not a new idea. The Eiffel Tower was modular, built in the nearby factory and constructed in just over two years for the 1889 World's Fair in Paris. During the Industrial Revolution in America and after World Wars I and II, affordable housing became scarce as people moved in large numbers to work in new factories or when soldiers returned from war. From 1918 to 1940, the Sears catalog offered kid homes, many of which still stand today in Chicago suburbs and around the country. In the 1950s, Lustron homes made of porcelain glazed steel were the bee's knees. Every surface of this home was considered maintenance-free, including the interior finishes and roof. Lustron ran into financial problems a few years into producing the homes and went out of business. But these first attempts at modernizing efficiencies continued to inspire future builders. Today in Chicago, a unique new plant is opening that takes these ideas to a new level. So modular has been talked about for 50 plus years. I mean, Sears did it a long time ago, and a lot of those are still standing. We always wondered when, not if. Uh, and I would say right now is that perfect storm of opportunity. But what's different about what we're doing is that we're incorporating design, engineering, construction, and manufacturing. So we're delivering the whole building as a product. The first buildings delivered will be well-appointed, yet affordable housing units for the west side of Chicago. This has a potential, okay, for multifamily, healthcare facilities, hospitality facilities. So we do commercial work too, right here inside this plant. The partnership with the Carpenters has been wildly positive. Well, the partnership, I mean, means so much. I mean, I, I said in my remarks earlier about my father being a 60 
year plus veteran in the Carpenters Union. So that relationship and connection to the Carpenters Union was, was very important to us. We're trying to give everybody an opportunity to get started initially, but they have the opportunity to graduate as a journeyman union carpenter at some point in their career. What we're doing here now is training our new assemblers. We have four lead carpenters that have about 30 years experience each. Each pad will have a separate uh, lead carpenter working with them. And we also uh, get to use the carpenters union facilities. As soon as I feel it, I'll make that bend. It's a groundbreaking day nationwide to have this plant right here in the city of Chicago. What we want to do is build careers. We want to provide opportunities for people to have um, jobs that can you can live on. The careers, the positive environmental impact, and the potential for affordable housing will come from the men and women working here in the 22nd Ward. What's directly behind me is the first work cell. It's a five-day process. The first work cell builds a floor, and these little pieces drop into it, a ceiling, they get uh, welded together, we get a three-dimensional box. By the end of the first day, we have drywall, uh, and we have fully roughed and first coat of mud. Day two, the next column bay, we start to finish, start to get some of the details in. Day three, so we're painting, we're putting in flooring, putting in tile in the kitchens and the bathrooms, start to put fixtures in. Day four, we've got countertops, cabinets, we have appliances. If it's a hotel room, we have a TV on the wall. Simultaneously, a foundation is poured and the site made ready for stackable assembly. We can make it affordable, it's even better yet. So when these come out of the line, they're gonna be, I would say, mid-scale, top-scale affordable housing. So I'm excited, you know, even the products are nice, state-of-the-art, it's all metal, it's all steel. Massive commercial application, you also see an exam room, uh, module sitting back there, insulation's in the wall, plumbing's in the wall. That is a first mock-up for lines that'll be right where we're standing today. I'd say we're saving 40% of just production time. And then shutdown time is even more, because you know, you don't have to stop for uh, any weather situations. Really cool. <laughs> when you think about, this is how they actually build cruise ships. It's something I enjoy doing. And anytime you go to work and you get to do what you like to do, it's not really much of a job. You just doing what you want to do and they actually pay you for it. Let's take our legacy in Chicago, uh, the, the skilled laborers that have built this city, the brilliant engineers and designers that have crafted it, and let's drive it full speed in the 21st century. That's all for this episode of Built to Last. Be sure to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Hey Monica, I told a joke about a hammer the other day. A hammer? And I nailed it! Ah, ha, ha, hearty, har, 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 har. Thank you.